Welcome back to Casa de Juice the house of Juice Daddy, and other Juice Daddy pickups. Uh, thanks for watching, and happy Labor Day weekend. For those of you who are not in the United States, I know out of the small but loyal number of viewers to my channel, and thank you all, I know many of you are outside of the United States, UK, Australia, other places. Um, I'm not sure if the first weekend or the first Monday of September is a big deal where you're at. In America, the first Monday of September is Labor Day. That makes the weekend before that Labor Day weekend. And it's kind of the last hurrah of summer, our last gasp of summer freedom before we get into the the grinds of fall and winter. You know, the kids are back in school. Um, there's commitments. We start moving into the holiday season here in a month or two. And summer, like, it's, it's the last time for cookouts and barbecues and camping and of course <laughs> that's how i've always viewed it and in montana it's very very true because we know snow is around the corner we know in the month of september we're going to get a pretty major snowfall it happens almost every year now it may not last we may not get that lasting snow where we don't see green again for six months until sometime in october but it could definitely happen in september and even though today was 80 degrees and the sun was out and it was big and bright and we're wearing short sleeves and shorts and flip-flops, we know that next week we maybe need to break out our winter coats because there's six inches of snow on the ground. So truly, we use this as the last, let's go enjoy summer one more time before it's gone. Therefore, I would expect that at least for here in the United States, um, maybe people got other plans than to watch a fat guy talk about video games on YouTube for Labor Day weekend. Even though us video game players aren't known for being socializers, we do get out on occasion and find other things to do. Therefore, I, even though I want to keep this streak alive, and it's, I think a couple people have noticed, I've gotten some comments or some some messages that, you know, people are kind of appreciating that I'm on a pretty regular upload schedule once a week, usually on the weekends, at least for the past couple months. And I probably could do more. Like, I know that an hour-long video, an hour of this face is hard to grind through. But honestly, I got other things to do. And <laughs> editing two or three videos. Who am I? John Hancock? <laughs> Once a week is enough for me, even if the video is an hour long. But anyway, um, I didn't want to use Labor Day weekend to put up another episode of the $5 game box, even though I've got one ready. There it is. I'll, I'll show it to you. There it is, just ready to be uploaded, ready to be uh, processed and put up on YouTube. That's episode uh, 14 of the $5 game box. That was my finds from last weekend. But we'll wait another week for the next episode of the $5 game box. Which means it's time for Juice Daddy pickups. Well, well, well. Inside this M&M's bag from M&M's World in Las Vegas, Nevada, I have packages. It's full of of a lot of packages that have been sitting around here for almost a month. Almost the entire month of August, I have been holding these off, waiting for a slow week at the garage sales, a slow week, you know, video game finds, where I can like, all right, I'm gonna shoot the pickup, so I have something this week, I have content this week, shoot, you know, open the, the packages, do some unboxings, people like that. They're, they're, people love watching me Take the knife and open up the envelope. There's good stuff in there. There's some NES games. There's some PlayStation 1 titles. There's some Switch games. Some good Switch games I've been looking forward to. They're in there. But we're not going to do that today. Because it's Labor Day weekend. And just doing a normal old video game YouTube show. Probably just not, not a good idea on Labor Day weekend. Because if you're watching... A video game show on Labor Day weekend in the United States. 
You are, as Mike Gardner used to say, a true nerd master. I'm a true nerd master. It's a good club. I think it's a great club, but I'm biased because I'm in the club. So, just a normal old episode of the $5 game box. That's not enough for a true nerd master. Opening some packages from Macari and eBay and Amazon. That's not good enough for the true nerd master. No. But the true nerd master wants to see is what's inside this Albertson's grocery store bag. This find that I found about a week ago at the retro video game store for $180. And when I noticed it sitting on the shelf behind him as we talked, and it's the same guy, he doesn't have any employees, so every time I go there, it's the same guy, and we shoot the breeze about video games and music and movies and pop culture and society, you know, chew, chew the hay, I guess you can call it. But as we're sitting there shooting the breeze, and I see it right behind him sitting on the shelf. Actually, that's probably a little exaggerated because I got to keep a poker face around him. Otherwise, he may go, oh, that's $20 more. <laughs> no, he wouldn't do that. But anyway, what would cause that reaction from the old juicer? Well, uh... That would PC Engine Core graphics sitting on the shelf of the only retro video game store in Bozeman, Montana would definitely cause me at least that reaction. Of course, when this is sitting on a stack of nine of these, yeah, that most definitely, this site sitting on a shelf, just kind of indescript in the corner, just sitting there, would definitely cause some thought. <laughs> the thought being... How quickly am I going to throw my credit card at this guy? <laughs> 180 bucks. We have a PC Engine Core Graphics and nine games, which I think is a really good price. Um, came with everything. Uh, we have power adapter here. However, he kind of warned me not to use it because it is frayed. You see the tape job, but that's okay because. And this is something I had to, you know, be made aware of. Because I had been looking at PC Engine, PC Engine Duos especially. Like on eBay every now and then when I, you know, there's coupons out and whatnot. I'm like, what about the power supply? Is it going to work in America? How, how am I, you know, why order this? Am I going to be able to power it up? The answer is yes. If you want to get into PC Engine collecting, um, yes. In fact, because I did not want to use that... I went to my American Turbo Graphics. Um, this is what I thought was my American Turbo Graphics. I actually grabbed my Sega Master System bag by, by mistake. It has all the hookups for my Master System. Just pulled the power supply without thinking. Worked. Plugged right in. Goes into you know the the, the wall socket. Powered it up just fine. Works like a charm. So I know the Nintendo one will work. The Sega Master System works, and the Turbo American Turbo Graphics one will work. You probably have one of those three at least. So. Even if you just can only find this on its own without the power supply, it'll work. Also came with, uh, of course, the uh, AV cables. And I show the AV cables, you know, I try not to show cables and stuff. Who cares about cables? But this is, um, for this, the cables is worth it. Because if you want to get into PC Engine or Turbo Graphics. Um, the Turbo Graphics and the original PC Engine, which is white with, I believe, like red trim, it only has um, RF, just the, the cable that plugs in the back of the TV. You know the one, old retro systems, it just, that's it. This Core Graphics has the component 
or the composite cables, not component, composite cables. So you can get a little bit better picture quality and sound, you know, a little bit. Um, the American Turbo Graphics has the capabilities, but you got to buy a turbo booster, which is expensive. So hmm, this is the way to go. Um, these are relatively cheap. The Japanese version sold like hotcakes over there. Unlike the Turbo Graphics in America, which sold like shit, which is why it's so damn hard to find one over here. So these, I think they sold them well into the 2000s. Like new games, systems new on, on shelves. So these are relatively, I say relatively, cheap. Or the, the, probably the cheaper way to get into PC Engine gaming. And we'll do the controller, which of course matches so nicely. The black and blue. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And it has, you know, that's how it got its name in America, the Turbo, because the every controller had turbo attached to the buttons. Pretty cool. Alright. Let's go these games. I mean, right off the bat, Ninja Warriors. I believe on Super Nintendo, this is a pricey game. I probably should double check that. I'm not sure. I think it's around $100, or give or take. Uh, but for... Did it release on Turbo Graphics? I'm assuming it did. It's not as good, supposedly, on this system than it is on Super Nintendo, but it is a good game. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, hard as balls, unless I'm missing something. Because you go through the first level and you're taking hits. Because it's an arcade game. It's kind of a quarter muncher. Uh, but you're powering through that first level. And I I didn't get... There's got to be power-ups somewhere. I, I must be missing them. But enemies aren't dropping shit. So I'm not... You know, when your, your, your energy level goes down, ain't nothing raising it back up. I probably need to look into it. There's got to be a way. Before you get to the end of the first level boss. With like that much left on your energy level. And he just one hits your ass and you're fucking done. There's got to be a way. But Ninja Warriors. And oh, by the way, yeah. These are all in really good shape. And I, I won't do this for every card, but I'll show you the back of... You've never seen a Hue card? That's what they look like. Yeah. Artwork. In my opinion, like, the artwork on the Japanese Hue cards are better than the... Um, what were the American cards called? Um, turbo chips. Turbo chips. They 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 look like they're from like late eighties, early nineties, with big block lettering and you know fonts and whatnot. Ninja Warrior. Uh, R Type One. R Type is a uh, on the on the PC Engine a little unique in that they split. R-Type up into two games. R-Type 1 and R-Type 2. R-Type 1, I believe, is the first four levels of R-Type. And R-Type 2 is the final three levels. Whereas if you buy the Turbo Graphics American version of R-Type, it's the whole game R-Type. So they must figure out how to put the whole game on one chip before it got to America. But it looks great. And it plays good too. Of course, I think R type looks and plays good on the Master System. So, and the Master System is less powerful than the Turbo Graphics. So, I just like R type. But yeah, it's it's R type. It's great. It's awesome. It's beautiful. Uh, got a couple sports titles. This is a baseball game. I think it's called Power Baseball. Power Moves Baseball. Um, there it is. Oh, I just dropped it. And these things don't hold them in very well, but they're slots. And uh, I don't know who brought it into the guy, but a lot of those have the foam inserts. So these were taken care of. By the way, that's the back of most of the games. Nothing. I think there's one game in here that has some screenshots. So there's the back of that. This, you wouldn't know it till you look at the Hue card, is a motorcycle racing game. I think it kind of looks like pole position with motorcycles. And it wasn't too bad. Arcadey, you know, but a little racing action. Let's do this one first before we get to that one. Power Tennis. 
And this is the only one that has screenshots on the back. There it is. And there's Power Tennis inside. Um, Hue cards, even though they're the same size, they will... Hue cards will only read on the PC Engine, and Turbo Chips will only read on the Turbo Graphics. They are region locked. So, the CD attachment, Turbo CDs, not region locked. Uh, Darius Plus. I'm sorry, I should have shown that. Darius Plus. Of course, you know, I like shooters. So, Darius. Nice little find. I have no idea what this game is. Maybe a fighting game of some sort? I don't know. Um, I'd probably just look it up. PC Engine Volume 17. What is it? <laughs> and get my answer. I think this is the only one that didn't come with uh, the little plastic like credit card sleeve to hold the game in. I'll probably just take the one from that tennis game. Um, after Burner 2, I think this along with the... Uh, Darius and the Ninja Warriors, probably one of the better, like, as far as value is concerned, valuable games in this stack. Although, I mean, I'm just excited to have any Japanese PC Engine titles in Casa de Daddy. So Afterburner 2, I'm sure you're familiar with Afterburner. There it is. Don't think this was released in the States. There's a lot of games. I'm sure it's a, probably a Sega licensing thing for the United States. and uh, But there are a lot of like PC Engine titles. And for the definitive authority on the internet on YouTube about PC Engine, look no further than the man who inspired me to want to do YouTube videos about my pickups, about my garage cell finds and whatnot, Bithead1000. You gotta go back a couple of years because uh, Bit Bithead's in his um, complete NES collection quest right now. And he's, he's you know, trying to get all the North American NES games. But a couple years ago, he sold a lot of his garage sale finds, like all of his N64 especially, and a lot of stuff. And he raised thousands of dollars to build a PC Engine collection. And it was, I just, I just watched, I watched those. Like, I, I was way more like, that's like, that was exciting to me, even over the NES collection thing. I mean, that's a, the NES collection's a, a big undertaking, and he's getting some great games for that. But the fact that he just, so like fuck the he's like fuck the N sixty four. I'm sometimes I'm like fuck the N sixty four. I could I I probably lose my mind about how much I could sell my N sixty four stuff for, and I like and I've said it before on this channel. My N sixty four is basically a WWF No Mercy machine because that's the only game I would still play on it. Ocarina of Time. There's a better way to play it. Um, Mario sixty four. Even playing on the Wii is probably better than breaking out the N sixty four on that. That's my opinion, but. Um, I really should, if I want to get serious about PC Engine collecting, do what Bithead did and just put all my N64 stuff and a lot on eBay with, like, no reserve and see what happens. I probably won't do it. I won't have the guts to do it like he did, but, um, I should. Oh, let's finish, finish up here with Ordine. Ordine's another shooter, um... Some people might describe it as a cute em up because it's got that kind of aesthetic. I don't think it qualifies as a cute em up. Um, by the way, I haven't played all of these. Like I said, that one I didn't know the title of. I have not thrown that in yet. But the ones I did play, not knowing a lick of Japanese, has not been a hindrance yet. A lot of the menus are in English. Um, this one has like an economy system where you collect money. Uh, from certain enemies and then throughout the levels there's like stores kind of like a fantasy zone in that way a little bit like that and those stores like the menus and stuff are in Japanese but there's pictures and graphics so you can kind of get the gist of what you're buying so uh Oridine. so we got three shooters this one Darius and R-Type Afterburner maybe qualifies as a shooter I don't know Couple sports titles, a racing title, and I have no idea what that other thing is. Nine PC Engine titles. And I know there's some exclusive PC Engine games that I've... Um, the Proteus ones. Um, there's a game called Download. There's a lot of games for the PC Engine that didn't make it to the United States just for the simple fact they, like, use licensed music. 
they used like actual music without obtaining the rights from the the people who made the music and unless they just completely redid portions of these games there's no way they could have made them into the united states and there they are just sitting in japan so maybe i'll do a little ebay shopping spree at some point and build my uh pc engine um Oh, I want, you know, like, if you want my advice, you take it from Fat Man. If you do want to get in a PC engine, first of all, um, it's not going to be cheap. You, you can buy a ton of cheap games for it. And this is probably the cheapest way to get a system. And it's what I would recommend. I know you, especially if you're here in the States, you want to get the American Turbo Graphics. Just get this. All the games are on it. And you just want to play the games on the original hardware with the original controller, the, the Turbo EverDrive. There's like an EverDrive for almost every system. There's an EverDrive for NES, Super NES, you know, you, you search. I always see the Turbo EverDrive like really recommended over even the, 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 the Nintendo ones. Like get the EverDrive, load it with the ROMs, and, and like the SD card in the EverDrive will hold every freaking game plus like homebrews and um, EverDrive. It's probably the only way you're going to play a lot of the games that are just stupidly expensive. Like Magical. Look up Magical Chase. Go ahead. Look it up. I mean, stupidly expensive. Um, but yeah, I mean, the EverDrive is, I think, 80, maybe 100. I know it's a legality. Oh, I don't want to play ROMs or whatnot. And I just think, like, if you just want to play the games... You could just emulate them here on the PC, but then you're playing with some shitty USB controller or an Xbox 360 controller. If you want to play on the original hardware, the EverDrive is a great way. I mean, you can build... You can, I have an EverDrive. I have an EverDrive. It's in my TurboGrafx-16 right now. I still buy games when they become available, like, and not stupidly expensive. I think the ret same retro stores had or had at one point a copy of Splatterhouse for like $110. And I could not ever bring myself to spend $110 on that copy of Splatterhouse when I knew I could play Splatterhouse, um, I believe, on the Ultimate Genesis Collection for PS3. I believe it's on there. Or it's, no, it's on, it's an unlockable on the Splatterhouse PS3 game, which you can find probably off GameStop for $10. Amazon, eBay, probably $10 or less. It's an unlockable on there. Buy the Splatterhouse 360, Xbox 360, PS3 uh, game. And I think Splatterhouse 1, 2, and 3 are all on there. Perfectly emulated. So, why am I going to spend $110 on a Hue card? But, he has that other Turbo Graphics games coming, like that Goodwill Find or whatnot, that, you know, were like in the $40 to $60 range. And I just bought them, even though I haven't loaded it as a ROM on the EverDrive. Same thing with Hue cards, you know? You probably... I think the, the reason the Turbo Graphics or the Turbo uh, EverDrive is recommended more than the NE, NES, Super NES, Genesis, or whatnot is just the availability of Turbo games, Hue card games, just for normal collectors and where you would normally find games. You're not going to find Turbo Graphics games a whole lot in thrift stores. You're going to be lucky finds. Pawn shops... Goodwills, thrift stores, garage sales. It's going to be luck. I mean, how often do you see this? Like like I, told, I showed you my reaction when seeing this sitting on the shelf in the retro game store in Bozeman, Montana. And so you want to play it. You want to get into it enjoy the games, which a lot of them are only on this little system right here. Um, you know, I, I don't get paid by the EverDrive. I don't make them. I, it's, just, it's, it's a recommended product. Anyway, I am so excited. If, if you couldn't tell, of 20, almost 25 minutes of me babbling on about the old PC Engine here. PC Engine Core Graphics. Whew. Couldn't believe my eyes. And uh, I did have a little internal debate of whether I should drop $180. Like, well, you get paid in a week and then you'll have the money and blah, blah, blah. No way was I letting this pass up. No way was I letting this is. It seemed to me as a game collector, 
a once in a lifetime opportunity, especially a game collector who doesn't get to these retro paloozas or these gaming fests that are held. Nothing comes near Bozeman, Montana. You know, I have to really make a special trip to like the things going out in Portland and Seattle that John Hancock or Metal Jesus do, or down to Retro Palooza where all of you awesome like Texas gamers like um, Seventh Level and Game Chasers are going, and not, not even ignoring the Paxes and whatnots. Like seeing PC Engine and Nine Games sitting in the Retro Game Store, Bozeman, Montana, just felt like something that was never going to happen again. And $180 was a small price to pay to make sure this was in my collection and not somebody else's. And I think a true nerd master who would be watching a fat guy talk about video games on Labor Day weekend would appreciate that. Thanks you all for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, make sure you subscribe if you haven't or tell your friends about old, old Juice Daddy here and his $5 game box. You'll see a new episode in a week. But uh, you gotta subscribe. Because we're gonna do a 300 sub contest when I reach 300 subs. It's gonna happen one day. I got some great games ready to give away to a lucky subscriber. All I gotta do is reach 300 subs, so help me out. Uh, thumbs up the video. Comment down below. What do you think? You got PC Engine? Do you play on PC Engine? Turbo Graphics? Do you want one? If you're like me, you were in high school, you know... Looking at magazines, like, not dirty magazines, game, video game magazines. Get your mind out the gutter. Looking at Die Hard Game Fan or Game Pro and seeing those PC Engine titles that are coming over. Or looking at Turbo Graphics, going, oh, I wish I could afford two systems. But no, you, you had the Nintendo already. You had the Genesis already. You couldn't have that. And of course, if you had a choice, you probably bought a Super Nintendo or, or, or Genesis. Because that's where all the games your friends were talking about were. If you had a Turbo Graphics, you were the fucking weird one. And if you played video games that you were my age back in middle school, you were already the weird one. So it's very exciting, you know, a month into being 42, to be a PC Engine owner. And for Labor Day weekend, while others are enjoying the last hurrah summer and having cookouts and, you know, being out in the yard, doing outdoorsy things, camping, maybe going for a hike, getting on the boat one last time. I'm going to watch some St. Louis Cardinal baseball and hook up the old core graphics and play some PC Engine. What you going to do? I'll see you next time here on the Juice Daddy channel. Check out the Instagram, Juice Daddy 5. This has been up for about a week. If you follow Juice Daddy 5 on Instagram, you saw the PC Engine long before I shot this video. So check it out. Instagram Juice Daddy 5. I will see you soon. Take care.